and, and how we should look forward to the week ahead. So Friday has been a risk off day. It doesn't look like today is any different than others. And I, I think actually the market's trading on a fairly sane rhythm today, given the, the jobs report, which even though it was above consensus in terms of, of you know, bad report, nobody had a firm number. They expect it to be bad. Uh, from my standpoint, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see corporate America, particularly the well-funded public companies, take a quarter off of worrying about profitability. As a shareholder of public companies, I'd support that. Most important right now is to worry about employees and the communities in line with the business roundtable statement that they put out on August 19th of last year. So I think that would give everybody comfort because the number one thing we got to worry about is the economy. You're, you're talking and that about, will help the economy, help the consumer come back. You're talking about big companies coming out like, you know, Brian Moynihan said earlier, even as it relates exactly. to just kids who are coming out of school, that they're going to have jobs, not to mention the current employees of, of Bank of America and some of these other firms that are keeping their employees, as, as we've been talking um, the whole time. And, and Kramer is really, I think, led the charge in this, you know, hashtag no more layoffs. That's what you're talking about. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you know what? Larry Fink has put out a number of letters. They redefined what the corporate purpose is, and they put shareholders last. They put employees, communities ahead of shareholders. That was the right thing to do. As owners of more than 50 percent of every publicly traded companies, the passive in firms BlackRock and Vanguard leading, it should come out and say to companies, we want you to worry about those higher up in the food chain, your employees, your suppliers, your communities. Take care of them first. We think long term. We think 10 years. Mm -hmm. Two quarters of foregoing profitability to take care of those people isn't going to matter. That's what I would like to see. And I think the market would trade up at that point. Yeah. So, Shannon, tell me where, we, where you think we are uh, in, in the market at the, the current time, again, coming off of you know, a week that was huge to the upside. Now we're going to likely end to the downside this week, and, and we try and figure out where we go from here. The, the challenge here is that we've seen the positive impacts of the Fed already, and we're looking for that positive economic stimulus. I see a lot of historical uh, work being done over the course of the last several weeks looking at, you know, when the markets bottomed versus, you know, peak jobless claims or lo the, the lowest levels of the ISM. I think the challenge here is if you're looking for economic data to provide you with this path, We've seen such a rapid deceleration in economic data. I don't know that it's an apples to apples comparison. So we're really looking at those parts of the uh, market that have caused, I think, some of the, the dislocating impacts. So for instance, when we saw the VIX spike, a lot of that was based on the fact that we saw those sharp declines in energy. We saw a lot of margin calls. We saw some short covering. Uh, so I think we were moving into perhaps a still elevated volatility period as represented by the, by the VIX, excuse me. But I think that what we're looking for now is that it's going to be more looking at the under underlying companies, looking at asset classes, looking for reallocation, and potentially not calling a bottom here, but the ability to put some capital back to work for longer term investors. I think equities look attractive. And I think we need to be more comfortable that this is a two, probably a two quarter economic impact. And therefore, um, you know, we can start to model that out and price that out as we get this economic data. So, Josh, the other side of that is what Morgan Stanley talks about today when they talk about deeper drop, slower climb. We're we're talking as if and Shannon just mentioned, in, at least in, in her eyes, this is a two quarter situation. What if it's not? What does that mean for the stock market? Yeah, it's not a two quarter situation. Um, so. I would love I'd love to be wrong about this. I don't think I will be. Um, and I think what Morgan Stanley had to say is reasonable. Um, one of the most important roles that a money manager plays in the lives of their clients is not just what's the performance, what's the volatility, because a lot of that is, is math. It's really about setting expectations. One of the things that I talked about on, a, on an all hands call with with my client facing advisors yesterday was just this idea of, look, we're six weeks into this. The average bear market throughout history is about 13 months. So you have some that are eight months, um, which would be what, what Shannon's talking about, and I hope that's, that ends up being the case, but some that are two years, and we really don't know at the outset the, the depth and the duration. Now, you could make the case 
that a lot of the stock decline that you typically see in a bear market, we've already had it. And that's reasonable. Um, so I think what we're trying to do with clients is to have them be prepared for a more worst case scenario. And we've got tools in order to, to counteract that. We manage money both strategically and tactically. So that's not really the big concern. The big concern is duration. Because as excited as people were to buy the dip, understanding all the terrible news that's happening on the health front, as, as excited as people were to buy the dip, will they have the same enthusiasm to do that, Scott, um, if this is still going on in June? Or in July, I, I even my, my wonder, take from, you know, from 20 years of experience is that they won't. Let me read you some of the, you know, I read you the headline of the Morgan Stanley note. And now let me read you some of the text because, you know, if you if you subscribe to this point of view, it changes the way you're going to think about the stock market. We now see a shallower rebound in three in Q3. And we do not see activity returning to its pre-virus level until the end of 2021. So that's well, a long way I, off. Can I, just point out something that ha can I just point out something that happened this week? So I think what happened this week was really constructive for the bulls. And I'll, and I'll explain to you why. Um, last week, we had an amazing rally, histor a historic rally uh, took place. And that's great. It gives people a chance to relook at their allocation and catch their breath and make decisions without an explosion going on in front of them on the screen. So I like that that happened. And this week, we really didn't give that much back. So that's constructive. Secondly, there is a differentiation in what got hit this week. It was not across the board. So this week, the hardest hit areas, retail. Um, so, so take a look at the XRT um, and, and REITs, IYR, anything to do with, with, um, with property. That actually makes sense to me. And then, of course, Carnival down another 40-something percent this week. So, like, there's still pain for the airlines, for the cruise lines. And now they're hitting the names that are most susceptible to this drop in consumer confidence. It's rational. It makes sense that that's happening. But then Amazon is up on the week. Microsoft is up on the week. These companies have almost become infrastructure plays. They're how we're getting by right now. So I like, Scott, that there's dispersion and that um, we're, we're, making a, we're making a judgment call before we just sell everything. That's what's changed this week versus two weeks ago. Well,